the time has come to start the Hitachi Limited web conference on the third quarter fiscal year 2021 uh, earnings. Thank you very much for your participation, despite your busy schedules today. Regarding the materials for uh, today's meeting, uh, they are available on the Hitachi Limited IR site and the news release site though, for your reference. I will now introduce the speakers for today. Yoshihiko Kawamura, Senior Vice President and Executive Officer, CFO. Otomomi Kato, General Manager of the Financial Strategy Division. Masao Yoshikawa, Executive General Manager of the Investor Relations Division. Uh, Mr. Kato will be participating online as a precaution against COVID. Therefore, there could be some time lag uh, in terms of the interaction, but uh, we will do our utmost to facilitate the process. But regarding the outline of the results, uh, CFO Kamara will start the explanation. We will be switching off the screen now. Mr. Kamara, please. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the introduction. My name is uh, um, uh, Kamara of uh, CFO. I'm very happy to uh, talk about the uh, financial results for the third quarter and uh, December 31st, uh, 2021. Uh, the Omicron uh, variant uh, uh, infections are increasing significantly, and I would like to express my gratitude for everyone who is uh, uh, making effort to overcome this challenge. Uh, this is the table of contents of what I would wish to cover today. I would like to uh, give uh, a qualitative uh, explanation um, in number one. And uh, the second item is uh, Q1 to Q3 fiscal year uh, 2021 results, uh, followed by Q3 fiscal year 2021 results. And lastly, I would like to talk about the fiscal year 2021 forecast. Uh, let me now explain the materials to you. Please refer to page three. Yeah, I would like to talk about the uh, macroeconomic outlook uh, that is changing very rapidly. The upper table shows the macroeconomy outlook uh, by regions. GDP is recovering, even with the pandemic. Uh, the, um, the consumption is uh, recovering for uh, the calendar year 2021. You can see uh, that uh, in all the regions, uh, GDP uh, is likely to recover. But this is also having a significant impact to, on our orders received as well. It is growing very significantly on the back of the, the economic recovery. But uh, in the near term, having said that, uh, there are some negative factors as well. Uh, first and foremost, the uh, material prices such as uh, steel as well as uh, uh, copper prices are, are soaring. Furthermore, semiconductor shortage uh, is uh, continuing. Uh, Ukraine uh, is also a uh, risk. I would like to address this if there is time. Uh, Global Logic has a development center in the Ukraine, so therefore there is concern in this area. Interest rate is likely to increase. Uh, we have been enjoying a low interest rate uh, environment uh, in the past, uh, but uh, as uh, interest rate uh, changes, um, the balance sheet uh, may be impacted. Uh, therefore, in the near term, uh, we are faced uh, with a very difficult uh, management uh, environment. Uh, even though we are faced with challenges, uh, as you can see in the following page, uh, we have been implemented these uh, uh, measures in a safe fast manner. A semiconductor shortage, as well as the soaring material prices, as well as the COVID-19 uh, re-expansion uh, is making uh, uh, the business conditions very harsh. However, we have been able to implement measures uh, to overcome these challenges. And therefore, we have been able to maintain the fiscal year 2021 forecast. Uh, regarding semiconductor as well as material impact uh, will be explained in the following page. 100 billion uh, negative impact uh, was uh, incurred, but uh, it has been recovered and we have not change the, the outlook for the year. The bullet points uh, should be referred to here. 
um, for uh, semiconductors having an impact uh, in Hitachi Astoma as well as the measurement and analysis systems. As uh, for material cost increase is having impact on Hitachi Astoma uh, energy as well as a uh, building system business. COVID-19 uh, with the uh, Omicron uh, variant, uh, the overall business uh, is also being impacted as well. Uh, but uh, we have not changed uh, the outlook for the year. The forecast has not changed. And number two is related to what I've already covered. Uh, um, orders uh, are proceeding very well. I will show you a chart later, especially in the area of the, the environment, uh, such as uh, Hitachi Energy and uh, Railway System Business uh, has enjoyed uh, very strong uh, orders. And the first I mentioned and under number one, even though a semiconductor shortage as well as a soaring material prices uh, are, uh, is uh, a challenge, but if this challenge can be overcome, uh, we will be able to recover uh, the business. Uh, therefore, all this received uh, will be an uh, important uh, driver uh, for uh, the recovery of the performance uh, regarding the mother business. Uh, it has uh, proceeded uh, very um, successfully. Global logic uh, is uh, showing significant uh, growth today. As already mentioned here, Hitachi Energy orders uh, remains very strong and firm. For Q3 orders uh, was uh, to the tune of 4.2 billion US dollars. Uh, order backlog is uh, 14 billion US dollars. Very significant uh, backlog uh, uh, is uh, what we have today. Railway systems has been uh, reported uh, very recently, 300 billion in terms of uh, the bullet train uh, in the UK. Uh, Lumada on an organic basis uh, is uh, growing by 15%. Uh, Global logic, on the other hand, uh, uh, is increasing by more than 50%. Uh, therefore, in terms of environment as well as uh, Lumada, global uh, logic uh, for these uh, strategic businesses uh, have continued to grow significantly. Number three, uh, portfolio uh, reshuffling uh, or transformation is taking place as scheduled, as already announced. That the uh, construction machinery uh, shares uh, will be partly uh, be, uh, disposed of. We had uh, 22 uh, entities uh, that uh, were parent and child listing. Uh, but uh, with the sales of the uh, construction machinery shares, uh, this uh, issue will be behind us. Uh, fully consolidated series uh, will not be uh, included anymore. Uh, therefore, the, uh, the portfolio uh, transformation has run its course. Uh, this fiscal year. Now, please refer to page five. Vertical axis uh, is showing uh, the various businesses. The horizontal axis shows the various factors such as semiconductor shortage, uh, soaring material prices, and, and uh, activity constraint due to pandemic and logistics and others. For each sector, we have identified here uh, what uh, have been the impact. Uh, what uh, is noteworthy is uh, the area that is highlighted in a black solid line. Significant uh, impact uh, was felt for energy, Hitachi, uh, which used to be HAPT, uh, is, has been impacted by the electrical steel sheet. Uh, supply is very tight and uh, price is increasing, having a significant impact here. For mobility, on the other hand, uh, in the area of the material prices, the elevator business uh, has been impacted significantly in the second half. For Hitachi Astomo, uh, the semiconductor is having a significant impact, and uh, uh, as well as the uh, steels and uh, copper prices having an impact as well. I can address questions later uh, regarding the impact in terms of monetary terms. In terms of offering income for semiconductor on a consolidated basis, uh, the, the impact is around 75 billion yen downward, uh, therefore. Uh, this uh, will have to be recovered. In terms of material cost, uh, the impact is 90 billion. Compared to previous year, negative numbers have been presented, but uh, we have not changed uh, the forecast uh, for the fiscal year. Therefore, these two negative factors uh, have been absorbed. And by so doing, we have not changed our forecast. Page six. Here, uh, we have the highlights of the orders. Uh, significant increases are shown here uh, for IT, Hitachi Energy Industry, Railway System, and the Hitachi High Tech. Uh, YOY uh, for the third quarter, as well as uh, um, Q1 to Q3, uh, numbers should be uh, referred to. You can see 
the Y Y basis, I think uh, the increase was 112% to 16% on a cumulative basis for the three quarters. You can see that uh, orders uh, have increased in all these areas uh, year on year. The basic uh, factors are shown on the right hand side. If you look at IT, uh, DX uh, has uh, remained very strong. Uh, the model solutions uh, have uh, been proceeding very successfully. Global logic uh, is having a significant positive impact for Hitachi Energy, on the other hand, as you can see here. Um, the new grid has been established. Renewable energies uh, will be accommodated, uh, and therefore the grid upgrade is taking place. And we have been able to respond to this need. Uh, Saudi, uh, Egypt, uh, uh, interconnected as a good case in point. In Denmark, on the other hand, uh, the fast charge EV operations uh, business has been uh, one. For industry, overall, the market is recovering, especially the U.S. business is uh, now recovering, having an impact here. For railway uh, systems, as I have already mentioned, the U.K. Uh, bullet train has been won, new businesses have been won, and for high tech, new businesses have been uh, won. So for these uh, segments, uh, we have been able to receive uh, significant orders. Page seven. Here, I would like to talk about the highlights of uh, major business, starting with global logic, uh, then Hitachi Energy, Hitachi Stemo, and uh, railway systems. Uh, for global logic, as, as I already mentioned, it has been a very strong business for us. As you can see in the table, uh, the revenues on a worldwide basis has grown by 151%. On, this is on a yen base, and uh, um, it's 139% uh, uh, on a dollar basis, uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, growing very successfully to the right. Hitachi Energy, as I have already mentioned, the material cost uh, is increasing, having a significant impact. Uh, orders are very strong. However, impact uh, uh, is felt uh, from uh, a cost increase. Um, the revenues is 1.3% uh, to AOI at minus 0.4. And uh, our demo has been impacted very significantly by semiconductors as well as material costs. Uh, YOI basis, 164% uh, uh, increase in revenues, uh, but uh, AOI um, decreased by 6.4 billion. To the left, uh, railway systems. Foreign exchange is having an impact. And uh, there is a revenue increasing impact, uh, but uh, material cost uh, is having impact. Project cost uh, is increasing. As a result, uh, revenues uh, uh, year on year was 1.12%, AOI was uh, minus 0 0.2. Uh, therefore, uh, the semiconductors as well as material cost uh, is having a significant impact uh, on our operations. Page eight, Lumada. As I have already mentioned at the outset, uh, uh, this is uh, growing as planned. And uh, the bar graph uh, should be referred to. Uh, the red uh, is showing the Lumada core business, and gray uh, is the related business for Lumada. And uh, at the end of the uh, fiscal year, it is likely to grow to 1.06 uh, trillion uh, growth uh, by 40%. So this is organic growth uh, without uh, M&D. 70% uh, of growth, uh, uh, organic growth uh, is expected. Uh, right hand side, the uh, pie graph uh, should be referred to. You can see that uh, revenues are increasing, uh, but uh, uh, the mix uh, is uh, changing. Uh, there are two factors to be mentioned here. Uh, if you compare the two pies, uh, energy uh, is different. It was 3% last year. And with the Hitachi Energy collaboration is making progress. So, so it has increased to 7%. Smart life, uh, left hand side uh, is 6% uh, to the right, uh, it has increased to 12%. Uh, this is because of collaboration with high tech having an impact. So the mix is changing. And in fact, uh, this is a scenario that uh, we have uh, aspired to achieve. Now, so far, I have uh, talked about uh, the uh, major characteristics uh, of uh, the three uh, third quarter results. From the next page onward, I would like to talk about the Q1 to Q3 uh, results. Please refer to page 10. Uh, this is uh, showing Q1 to Q3 results. Uh, revenues and uh, adjusted operating income uh, is shown here. Uh, this is an increase in revenues as well as increase in uh, operating income. 
Now, if you look at the operating income on adjusted basis, uh, there was a 316.9 billion increase to 484.4 uh, billion, which is increased by 1.5 times. And uh, right hand side, uh, uh, some banks uh, presented to ABC's revenues has uh, increased by 41%. The mother business uh, has grown by 40%, EBIT uh, increased by 97.8 million yen, and the uh, net income methodology has uh, uh, increased to 450.7 million yen, uh, increase of 142.9 million. Uh, the annual target is 550 billion. So uh, we have already achieved 82% uh, uh, now, uh, EBITDA, is uh, uh, one trillion, uh, and uh, operating cash flow is negative, uh, but operations uh, are uh, making progress. Uh, therefore, um, the inventory is increasing, and uh, as a result, uh, free cash flow uh, is being impacted negatively. Uh, working capital is increasing by two billion. Uh, please now refer to page eleven. Results by five sectors, uh, a stimul and uh, listed as a series. Uh, results are shown here. Now, uh, for the uh, three quarters, uh, please look at the caption about the five sectors uh, had uh, revenues, profits, and increase. A stimul had also a uh, revenues and profit increase. Listed as a series uh, also recorded uh, increase in revenues and uh, profits. So uh, please refer to the numbers below. The second from the top uh, is adjusted operating income. Uh, but five sector is 368.7 billion, uh, uh, thermal uh, 34.5 billion, and this was the series uh, 81.1 billion. Why a uh, number is also shown here. And total uh, is uh, 484.4 billion. And this was the bar graph in the middle. Uh, this is uh, uh, increased by 167.5 billion year on year. Adjusted operating income ratio uh, is also shown here. For the five sectors, 7.7% uh, as demo uh, has been struggling because of the factors aforementioned uh, at the 3%. Uh, listed good series uh, in, um, improved significantly in 5.7%. Uh, total is 6.6%. Uh, page 12, page 13, page 14, uh, the detailed uh, segment uh, information. So let me highlight the areas that are difficult. First of all, uh, referring to page 12, the uh, ID uh, for the uh, gray out area should be referred to. Uh, the op uh, adjusted operating was 70.6 billion, uh, margin was 11.4%. Uh, but uh, if you look at the YOY uh, comparison, it's uh, minus uh, 3.2 billion. The reason is shown on the right hand side. Uh, Global Logic uh, was acquired. Uh, so there is PPA amortization that has begun to the tune of 10 billion. Uh, therefore, this is also having an impact as well. Uh, for IT, uh, there is also services and platform that is noteworthy. Uh, YOI, uh, AOI is uh, plus 1.3 billion, uh, but, if we, but uh, it is uh, um, uh, decreased by 0 0.4 points. The semiconductor shortage is having an impact for the storage business in the United States. We have orders, uh, but uh, cannot accommodate uh, because of uh, the uh, pa parts are in shortage, having an impact on delivery and shipment. Energy, the YOY is uh, plus 15.6 uh, 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 billion. Uh, that's a 1.9 point increase. Uh, recently, we have been discussing Hitachi Energy uh, power grid, uh, if you look below, Hitachi Energy is included here. Um, the accumulated basis for the three quarters, uh, 47.6 billion, uh, margin was 6.0% uh, for Hitachi Energy. To the right, uh, YOI, AOI uh, is uh, 12 billion, uh, which is uh, negative uh, one point. In addition to this, as shown below, the re related uh, costs uh, that uh, have been incurred uh, to the tune of 52.7 million, um, inclusive of PPA amortization. Uh, therefore, uh, this is uh, the situation of uh, Hidati Energy, page 13, industry. 
uh, all the segments uh, are uh, recovering uh, for the past year because of uh, the pandemic. Uh, customers have uh, curtailed uh, investment, but now this is uh, uh, coming back. For industry at the very top, uh, YOY basis, AOI basis was uh, 29.6 billion or increased by 4.4 points. Uh, to the right, uh, it is mentioned that the uh, US jail automation uh, for robotics uh, in the United States uh, has been recovering very significantly. Mobility. YOI basis is uh, uh, plus 5.3 billion or 0 0.9 points negative. The reason is because of the building system elevator business. Uh, in China, on a continuous basis, uh, we have been uh, expanding the elevator business, but uh, renewal business uh, we have in Japan for our customers' buildings and hotels uh, are not making progress. This is having an impact on this number. Smart life. Overall, a YOY is uh, minus 10.8. Billion. Uh, that's uh, plus minus zero points. The reason why it has declined by 10.8 billion uh, is uh, because of uh, the diagnostic uh, imaging related business and that has been sold to Fujifilm and uh, the uh, home appliances, uh, smart life and eco friendly systems. Uh, Ajak uh, uh, has acquired um, our business, which is having an impact. Uh, page 14. Uh, this is uh, a demo uh, for. The three quarters YOI uh, was uh, AOI increased by 34.6 billion. It is different uh, on a standalone basis, uh, but uh, uh, for the three quarters, uh, this is the number. Uh, Hitachi construction machinery uh, recovering by 42.9 billion, uh, recovered by 5.3 points. Hitachi metal, a significant recovery at uh, 29.2 billion, uh, plus uh, 4.6 points. At the very bottom, total YOI basis. Uh, AOI uh, increased by 167.5 billion or 1.3 point increase has been achieved. Page 15. The upper graph is showing revenues and uh, below is adjusted operating income. Uh, to the left uh, is uh, the um, three quarters for last year and uh, to the right uh, is the three quarters for this fiscal year. The waterfall chart uh, is shown uh, between the two numbers. Uh, the so let me talk about the revenues because it's the same for AOI. Now this year, various measures have been implemented. And what are significant uh, are shown here. First is the acquisition of the uh, power grid business. Uh, next, uh, Hitachi Astemo, uh, Honda parts companies have been integrated to uh, acquisition of Global Logic. And the foreign exchange uh, has had an impact as well. Uh, yen is becoming weaker. Uh, this is having an impact uh, uh, leading to the number on the right hand side. Uh, AOI um, showed similar trends. So uh, please refer to page 16. And uh, this is the revenues by market on a clockwise basis. Uh, North America first. A uh, 46% increase uh, was achieved in terms of revenues. Uh, Europe uh, pandemic was uh, having running rampant, uh, but uh, energy has uh, grown uh, by and uh, overall 33% increase. China grew by 37%. Japan uh, is in a very difficult situation. It is uh, almost flat. And uh, ASEAN India, other areas increased by 54%. Other areas uh, increased by 35%. Uh, energy as uh, thermal uh, has uh, driven the recovery. As you can see below in the overseas revenues, uh, it, the ratio is 61% uh, for overseas. So in the first quarter, second quarter it was 62% uh, for the first quarter, uh, second quarter was 60%. Uh, 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 therefore, in the third quarter, uh, there is no significant change. Uh, please take a look at page 17. Uh, this shows uh, the financial position and cash flows. On the far right, uh, there's a change uh, from March uh, 2021. Uh, this is part of the balance sheet. Uh, so what we're comparing against uh, is end of uh, fiscal year 2020 and the end of uh, the third quarter this fiscal year. There are two or three features uh, to focus on. Uh, debt bearing uh, debt 
uh, it has increased uh, by 1.1 trillion. When we acquired Global Logic, uh, we used uh, debt for funding, and so that is uh, reflected. Now, below that, uh, total Hitachi stockholders' equity. Of course, uh, we are gaining a profit. This is elevated uh, by 424.6 billion. And going below, cash conversion cycle, the number of days with respect to uh, cash, we are uh, strenuously collecting uh, debts. And so this has improved uh, by four days. And the E ratio at the bottom, uh, debt equity ratio. Uh, the funding for Global Logic uh, acquisition uh, was uh, funded by debt. Uh, so on a short term basis, it has uh, risen to 0.72 times, uh, increased by 0.18 points. But on a four year basis, it is seeing improvement. So by the next uh, fiscal year, uh, with uh, increase in operating profit, we will uh, bring this down uh, to 0.5 or so, which is the level that we have planned. It's above 0.7, uh, but uh, it is coming down and uh, it will be back to 0.5 or so next fiscal year. And uh, cash flow, cash flow from operating activities because of increased working capital, it has deteriorated. And uh, cash flows from investing activities, it has worsened by 261 billion. And that is because of uh, reactionary uh, change uh, from the sale of uh, Hitachi chemicals uh, from last year. So that is where we are in terms of uh, financial position and cash flows. So far, I talked about our performance on a cumulative basis uh, up to the end of uh, the third quarter. Now, please take a look at uh, Q3 uh, results, uh, specifically on page 19. Revenue, adjusted operating income, both revenue as well as AOI have gone up. Uh, please uh, take a look uh, at uh, AOI in the middle. One year ago, it was 136.1 billion. This year, 174.4 billion. So it has increased uh, by more than 30%. It's 1.3 times or so increase year on year. And uh, overseas revenue, on a year on year basis, 24% increase to Lumada business, uh, up 43% year on year. EBIT uh, increased by 58.6 billion. Uh, and uh, net income attributable to stockholders, 71.2 billion. EBIT uh, 68.2 billion. Uh, because of the reason I stated, cash flow from operating activities are down, but basically uh, both revenue and AOI have risen. Uh, pages 20 and 21, these are details on page 21. Uh, just like we saw earlier on a cumulative basis, five sectors, SMO, unlisted subsidiaries, their performance is listed. Please take a look at the caption at the top. Uh, five uh, sectors have seen both increase in revenues and profits. STEMO on a cumulative basis up until the third quarter, uh, increase in revenue and profit. Uh, uh, but for the third quarter uh, results only, it has increased our revenue, but down uh, in operating uh, profit. List of subsidiaries, uh, both revenues and profits increased uh, for HCM, Hitachi Metals, for uh, five uh, uh, sectors. Uh, you can see uh, uh, that 133.9 billion, a SEMO 12.2 uh, down. This is subsidiaries to 28.2%. Uh, and uh, the ratio 8.2% for uh, the parent, uh, STEMO 3.1% for STEMO, this is 5.9%, uh, total 6.9%. Page uh, 21, uh, we are facing with a harsh business environment. And for those businesses, uh, what are the details that is described here on page 21? As I said, for our IT business, uh, please take a look at uh, AOI, uh, 11. Point, uh, 2% uh, so down by 2.3%. So transportation and traffic related areas, especially where railway business is concerned, uh, there was uh, reduced investment from uh, customers uh, uh, and uh, semiconductor shortage uh, storage is affected. Lumada is robust. And so if you net against the pluses and minuses, this is where we are. And global logic, 10 billion or so of amortization has kicked in. And uh, Hitachi Energy, uh, this is an extension of what I said earlier. So rising material prices have had major impact. Uh, so down by a 0.4. Uh, 
uh, but orders are up and building systems uh, down 1 billion. China has seen recovery, but uh, customers uh, here in Japan are not having uh, renewals and uh, therefore that is negatively impacting our business in Japan. We have a systems orders are quite firm, but uh, product uh, mix and uh, product mix uh, change and uh, increase in project ramp up. Uh, overall, it's uh, negative. He uh, touched high tech industrial solutions uh, business, the trading house uh, business. Uh, we have been quite uh, selective in choosing what is profitable uh, at the uh, micro uh, level. Uh, this is the reason behind uh, reduction in revenue and operating income. And semiconductor shortage is also impacting uh, Hitachi demo 6.4 down year on year. So these are the factors, some of the factors negatively impacting our business. So that was the third quarter results. Uh, page 23 and onward inclusive of the fourth quarter. What is going to be the forecast for the full year? I would like uh, to explain. Uh, page 23, revenue, AOI, both are listed. Uh, both uh, revenue and AOI uh, are expected to increase on the left-hand side revenues. Uh, we're seeing market recovery and uh, power grid business, global logic acquired, and therefore revenues will hit uh, 10 trillion. We will recover uh, to uh, the 10 trillion yen level for the first time in several years. On the right-hand side, adjusted operating income, 227.8 billion. And this uh, number remains unchanged from the previous forecast, as I'm repeating, because of semiconductor shortage uh, and uh, material uh, cost uh, increase, so uh, more than 10 billion yen of impact, uh, we're overcoming that. On the right-hand side, a net income, 550 billion, that remains unchanged. Uh, therefore, no change uh, from the previous uh, forecast. A cash flow from operating activities, 750 billion, no change. A core free cash flow remains unchanged. ROIC, uh, there was a somewhat reduction uh, in profit. ROIC has deteriorated. Uh, it was uh, April 1% in October. Uh, it now uh, is going to be 7.6%. And FX rate, that is assumed this time, 110 yen to the dollar, 130 yen to the euro. The last time it was 105 yen and 125 yen uh, to the dollar and euro, respectively. But now we have changed the assumptions. Uh, if there's one yen change in the FX, what would be the sensitivity on a US dollar basis in terms of revenue, uh, plus 5.5 billion in euro, euro, 2 billion yen difference in revenue. Uh, take a look at page 24. Forecast uh, for the full year for five sectors of STEM and list of subsidiaries. Please take a look at the bullet points. Five sectors are expected to have increase in revenue and profit. Uh, STEM on a four year basis, the same. Increase in revenue and profit, list of subsidiaries, the same. And in uh, total, revenues will reach 10 trillion in total. And AOI, uh, five sectors. 546 billion, a sum of 68 billion, listed subsidies 109 billion. And the total comes to 723 billion we saw earlier. And uh, year on year increase of 227.8%. AOI ratio 8.3%, 4.3%, 5.8%, total 7.2%. Uh, uh, it's an improvement by 1.5 points. Page 25, please. By segment, uh, what is going to be the uh, forecast? Uh, the major trend is such uh, that it is basically the same as the trend we saw on a cumulative basis until Q3. IT, no change from previous uh, segment forecast. 263 billion, 12% uh, in the AOI. Uh, the US uh, storage business. Uh, depreciation and amortization uh, because of uh, DTA is impacting uh, energy, uh, 3 billion, 2.3% in AOI, uh, and your near increase of 77.7 .7 billion, up 6.6 .6 points. Hitachi Energy, uh, 64.7 billion, uh, AOI forecast 6.2%. 
and uh, this is up by 32.5 billion, 1.7 point increase. And uh, uh, PTA amortization, 4.4 uh, billion will be added. Uh, uh, and that's this number, page 26, uh, industry segment. Uh, FI 2021 forecasting gray, AOI 80 billion, uh, margin 9.0%, uh, uh, year on year increased by 34.4 billion, up by 3.5 uh, points. Uh, across the board, uh, there's recovery. Uh, mobility, as I mentioned, uh, the building systems, elevator uh, business because of uh, material cost increased uh, and uh, renewal not advancing in Japan. So in terms of absolute uh, a number, it's up, uh, uh, but uh, uh, revenue is up, uh, operating income down, so it's uh, down. L smart life, uh, plus 11.6 billion, up 2.8 point. And however, home appliances uh, are down. We have uh, sold overseas uh, home appliances uh, business uh, to Acek that is impacting, page uh, 27. SMO and uh, below. So take a look at YOI, AOI. You can see that uh, all the segments uh, or entities are seeing uh, plus numbers, positive numbers, and the trends are the same. So 10 trillion in revenue, 723 billion in AOI. And uh, this is up by 227.8 billion in total in terms of AOI increase. Page uh, 28, uh, this shows the transition from last fiscal year to this uh, fiscal year. Uh, the factors uh, behind have not changed in terms of revenue at the top. So last year's number on the far left and acquisition of power grid business, uh, Hitachi Asem integration, acquisition of global logic and uh, FI impact in terms of revenue is this much. On the right hand side, you see the number forecasted for this fiscal year, 10 trillion. And uh, AOI below 495 billion up to 723 billion. The factors are the same. Page 29. We tried to be creative in showing this this time. At the time, what we reported in October, the numbers as of October last year, and this time, uh, the forecast below. Uh, 723 billion on the far left, uh, unchanged. 550 billion on the right, no change there either. In between, there's change. Hitachi Metals uh, uh, sales uh, gain was expected to happen in October, uh, but uh, it's taking longer than expected because of uh, anti monopoly regulation clearance. And so there's slippage in terms of the timeline. It will be deferred to next fiscal year. So this is eliminated with uh, business reorganization, structural reform, uh, because of these initiatives, uh, uh, we are reducing cost. Uh, so what we expected uh, to be 50 billion is uh, down to 30 billion, 63 billion to 7 billion. On the right, tax uh, was expected to be 180 billion. Uh, it's now down to 140 billion. Uh, we have uh, credits in the US. We were able to utilize that for tax purposes. And so though uh, Hitachi Metal sales is deferred, postponed, uh, we are able to keep the net income uh, forecast and number the same at 550 billion. So that is uh, the content of the report, uh, page uh, 31 and onward, uh, the appendix, uh, FI uh, 2020 and uh, three, uh, Q, Q3, uh, on a Q3 specific basis uh, and cumulative numbers. Page uh, 31, you can see that the forecast uh, has uh, not changed uh, 100% uh, revenue uh, as well as AOI and net income. Energy industry on page 33, mobility, page uh, 34, life, page uh, 35, uh, SMO, uh, HCM, and metal on page 36, and the total is on page 37. I'm sorry for rushing through, but uh, that concludes uh, my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kamara. We will now proceed to the Q&A session. 
If you wish to ask a question, uh, please uh, refer to the raise hand button on the web uh, conference system screen. Uh, when your name is called, and please unmute and state your name and affiliation and ask your question. Furthermore, please release the raise hand uh, if you no longer wish to ask the question. We will not show the video of uh, the people who are asking questions. We will take questions in order of the Japanese channel media, uh, institutional investors, analysts, then uh, English channel participants in this order. So uh, first we will take questions from the media uh, on the Japanese channel. If you wish to ask a question, please use the raise hand button. Hiroi-san, please uh, uh, unmute and ask a question. Question. I hope you can hear me. I have uh, two questions. Uh, first is regarding Lumada. Uh, currently, uh, the Lumada profit contribution, please elaborate uh, on the IRD in 25, one, uh, 500 million out of uh, AOI of one, 1 trillion uh, is to be achieved at 2025. Uh, what is uh, the progress made so far? And uh, what uh, is necessary in order to realize this goal? And uh, there, I, if there are any um, interested segments uh, where the mother has not taken root, uh, what are the challenges that must be overcome? Answer. For the mother profitability, we only have uh, uh, the number in aggregate. Uh, we don't have uh, a breakdown by industry segment. And uh, Mr. Cotter will respond later. Page eight, looking at the pie graph, uh, I think uh, you alluded to the fact that it has not taken root fully, but uh, as you can see here in this graph, IT uh, is a very uh, large segment. Uh, energy is a recovering industry, is also uh, growing, mobility and life uh, are following. Therefore, across the board, the mother uh, utilization is increasing. As I have already mentioned, uh, in terms of railway systems, and energy, uh, Hitachi energy, effective utilization is being made. Uh, and therefore, there is no sector that is lagging behind in terms of uh, Lumada utilization. According to the numbers, that is not the case. There is no sector that is behind. As already mentioned here, in terms of environment related, uh, the utilization of Lumada is increasing. As uh, mentioned here in the topics on page eight, decarbonization applications, uh, in terms of uh, data management or uh, visualization of data, uh, areas uh, where the mother uh, is very effective. Uh, therefore, environment is an important pillar uh, for our company. And therefore, uh, going forward uh, across the board, especially in the area of environment, I'm sure that uh, the mother will continue to be increasingly utilized. Regarding uh, profit, I'd like to ask Kotosan to uh, uh, supplement. Let me add the following. From the past for Lumada business, uh, profit uh, was uh, somewhat uh, uh, qualitative in terms of our response. 10% to be exceeded in terms of profitability and uh, for core business and related business, uh, uh, we should achieve uh, this level. Uh, so we will continue to focus uh, on profitability increase. Uh, uh, revenues are increasing, and therefore, uh, in line with that, uh, profitability uh, increase uh, will also be promoted. Now, to your second question, 10% uh, uh, profit uh, objective for next year about the semiconductor shortage uh, is having an impact. Uh, what is uh, the um, probability of achieving this? Uh, with the Hitachi metals, uh, there could be a delay. And uh, um, operating profit margin 10%. Uh, what is the progress made? Uh, and what is the outlook for next fiscal year? Thank you for your question. Answer. Uh, this is something that we have been discussing from the past. Uh, uh, in uh, the 10% uh, profit margin uh, was the goal that we have set for this uh, midterm plan. Uh, but uh, last year has been impacted by the uh, COVID pandemic. Therefore, it has uh, been deferred to next uh, fiscal year. The current situation is such uh, that. For the five sector, 
uh, on an individual basis, as well as the PPA, uh, amortization uh, is also included. Uh, but uh, on a standalone basis, if you exclude these factors, uh, we believe that 10% uh, uh, is achievable for a demo and for our subsidiaries. The profitability uh, increment uh, will have an impact on whether we can achieve uh, this number. But for the five sectors, for the time being, and uh, if we exclude the PPA amortization, we believe that 10% uh, is achievable uh, according to our plan. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Yamabata-san, Yamabata-san, please unmute and start your questions. Uh, question, can you hear me? Yes. There are two questions I wish to ask. Uh, question number one, with respect to global logic. Up front, uh, Karma san talked about global logic. Uh, uh, there's a large development uh, center in Ukraine held by a global logic, but because of rising tension in Ukraine, uh, what is the impact uh, that you are feeling in Ukraine? And what is uh, uh, the outlook uh, from your perspective going forward? That's my first question. And the second question is uh, detailed. Uh, because of shortage of parts and components, US storage business is being uh, affected. What is uh, the value or amount uh, that's affected? Thank you for the questions. So first uh, question regarding Ukraine. We are concerned uh, about Ukraine very much. Uh, we are uh, following up uh, on CNN news and other news uh, reports. Uh, there are several thousands of employees uh, in Ukraine Global Logic, uh, but has there been any substantial impact so far? No, so they're operating as usual. If something happens, uh, uh, I think the problem will be concentrated uh, on the borders. So for the time being, we are not expecting any major impact on the operations. But uh, if uh, invasion uh, extends uh, to Kiev, how uh, should we protect uh, the safety of our employees? We have to think. And so there will inevitably be impact. But so far, uh, as far as Global Logic's usual operations are concerned, they're not affected from what we're told. We just uh, hope that uh, it will not uh, turn into a major conflict or war. And so we are closely uh, monitoring uh, the US response and situation uh, with the hope that uh, uh, this will not uh, end in a conflict or war. And the second uh, question will be answered by uh, Kato San, the impact from semiconductor shortage. Yes. So your second question regarding semiconductor shortage impact. Of uh, the overall impact uh, we explained uh, earlier, uh, we're not giving you the breakdown, uh, but uh, not on the order of uh, 10, more than 10 billion. So uh, that is where we are. Thank you. Are there any further questions uh, from the media on the Japanese channel? Uh, if you have a question, please uh, use the raise hand button. There seem not. Uh, we will proceed uh, to the institutional investors and uh, analysts uh, on the Japanese channel. If you have a question, please use the raise hand button. Is awesome, please. Please unmute and ask your question. Question. I just have one question. Uh, in the materials, uh, you talked about the DE ratio is 0 0.5. Uh, you want to uh, improve uh, going forward. Uh, that was mentioned uh, in the presentation. For next year, uh, cash flow uh, will be generated, as Congress has explained. Uh, but uh, cash flow from the sale of uh, subsidiary uh, is expected, I believe. And there is also cash flow from business to be generated. So it seems that uh, uh, 0 0.5 uh, can be exceeded very significantly in terms of improvement. So what will be the capital allocation from there, that point onward? And uh, how much uh, share buyback will you contemplate? 
from the original plan for Hitachi Metals, uh, timing has been delayed from the original schedule. So how has this impacted uh, the capital allocation uh, going forward? Please elaborate. Answer. Regarding uh, capital allocation, uh, in fact, uh, this is being formulated as we speak. Uh, under President uh, uh, Koshima, uh, uh, the new uh, midterm management plan is being formulated. Uh, and uh, around the golden week uh, after the end of the fiscal year, we will be able to uh, give clarity. We'll be able to announce it. Basically, uh, we do not intend to make a significant change in terms of our capital allocation. In other words, uh, we are not contemplating a significant uh, M&A, for example. So uh, one third each is what we have been asserting. One third is uh, M&A, one third is uh, um, return um, the, to shareholders and uh, uh, you know, one third uh, for business. That has not changed. Regarding the D ratio, according to the calculations that we have made at the end of March, Uh, we should be able to recover to the level of 0 0.63 at that time. Whether we want to do more than this will depend on the operating cash flow for next fiscal year. On a business as usual basis, uh, uh, we will be recovering to the level of 0 0.63. And uh, uh, if, you, if we have excessive cash flow, what are we going to do uh, is the question. And uh, comprehensive uh, uh, consideration will be made for capital allocation, but it isn't as if we're going to do something uh, conspicuous. A balanced approach uh, will be uh, emphasized. Regarding buyback, uh, we have the intention to do so at the level of top management. And I mentioned this uh, at a forum recently, uh, acquisition of a uh, um, company or divestiture uh, request uh, is very significant. Uh, we want to do this, uh, but uh, the open windows uh, are hard to come by. So we are looking for such opportunities at the same time. So uh, the amount uh, that has been contemplated uh, will depend on cash flow uh, that is to be generated. In terms of budget, 100 billion or even higher than that, uh, uh, around 100 billion is being contemplated. Uh, but it could be just one off, one time, uh, but it could be uh, different methods uh, that uh, will be taken into consideration. So that is how we are going to comprehensively deal with the capital allocation. It depends on uh, uh, operating cash flow generation, and that is very important. And based on that, uh, we will consider uh, what to do in next fiscal year. Uh, let me ask a question. I have a follow-up question. You said that it could be one time uh, implementation or it could be a different method that could be contemplated. But regarding D ratio and capital allocation is such uh, that uh, is not uh, just, it should not just be focused on the one year going forward for you now a new midterm plan will be announced uh, next uh, uh, spring. D ratio 0.5. Uh, is a certain standard and one third allocation each in a balanced approach has been mentioned. Uh, is this the new policy? So for shareholder return, it is uh, not just uh, one time, but uh, when there is excess, uh, there will be incremental allocation. May I understand that to be the case? Answer. As you rightly mentioned, uh, it isn't as if there is a set formula uh, we are not bound by a certain formula. We want to be flexible in this area. For D ratio, uh, historically, for our company, we have been very strong. 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 uh, has been uh, the uh, number in the past. So therefore, mentally reverting back to this level uh, seems to be appropriate. But on the other hand, companies uh, must continue to grow, investment to grow. Investment for growth uh, is necessary. So when there is a good opportunity, because we have a strong balance sheet, using debt for acquisition is a possibility we will consider. 
Therefore, D ratio 0 0.5 uh, is not something we are bound by, or a shareholder return one third is not something that uh, we that is set in stone. But but we do need. But having said that. Uh, uh, we need a standard. Uh, that is the reason why we are talking about a one third rule. Uh, that would be the basic uh, standard. But uh, we are not bound by that. Uh, debt equity ratio 0.5%, uh, 0 0.5 or uh, one third each is not uh, uh, something that uh, we are, uh, that is rigid for us. Thank you. To continue, Ushizumi san. Ushizumi san, please. Amir and start your questions. Question. Thank you for the presentation. First of all, I have two questions to ask. Question number one about shortage of parts and components, and rising material prices, and their impact. You talk 750 a billion yen of impact for semiconductor shortage, uh, material cost increase 90 billion. Are these uh, net uh, numbers? Uh, uh, are these uh, uh, the impacts on a net basis. Uh, well, the last time I think uh, semiconductor and parts and components uh, price increase uh, was uh, 15 billion, 5 billion, and 10 billion, respectively. And so, was that right? And how have you responded uh, to this, um, inclusive of passing on uh, the rising uh, price to customers? Uh, have you done so? And uh, when do you think uh, that uh, these uh, uh, trends will ease? Uh, if you have an outlook, if you could share that with us, please. Thank you for your questions. On page five, as I said, semiconductor shortage uh, in terms of AOI, 75 billion, and uh, parts and components, uh, 9 billion uh, at the operating income level. Uh, this reflects uh, our measures. We have made uh, various responses and measures on a net basis. These are the impacts, so net impacts. And uh, uh, Kato-san will provide you with more details. Uh, over to Kato-san. In terms of the gross impact, this time, 120 billion. Uh, uh, and uh, with improvements, 90 billion. Uh, last time it was 150 billion in gross and uh, 80 billion in net. Uh, deterioration by 15 billion year on year, uh, that's uh, uh, correct. Uh, so, total of uh, 15 billion, uh, 180 billion uh, in semiconductor parts and components uh, from. Uh, seven to five billion, so a negative 10 billion yen a change. And so how are we going to uh, respond to that was the second part of the question. We're talking about semiconductors and parts and components. Uh, what is happening is inflation. Inflation is happening not with uh, uh, components and semiconductors alone, uh, labor cost and uh, freight uh, transportation. So inflation is happening across the board. And uh, the question is, what are we going to do with them? In terms of inflation, uh, the overall cost structure is up. It's shifting upward. So uh, passing on increased price to customers, uh, we'll have no choice but to ask our customers to, to take on uh, price increases. And we will be doing this uh, firmly going forward. And of course, uh, cost control uh, will be implemented. We did not give you details, but uh, considerably uh, we are reducing costs. Uh, what, how are we doing that? Uh, three ways. One, uh, we are having the long-term stable contracts. Uh, that is the basic approach. And even with long-term uh, contract in place, because of supply and demand situation, steel, copper, uh, these material prices uh, move uh, uh, on a short-term basis. So uh, we are buying them on a spot basis from time to time. And number three, now that the market has become very tight, uh, partially, depending on the cases, uh, we have to think of uh, manufacturing some of the parts and components in-house internally. Well, power semiconductors, we do uh, make uh, in-house. So inclusive of that, to what extent uh, should we manufacture in-house? 
and once the price uh, adjustment happens, once again, uh, taking things on board uh, in-house uh, may become uh, difficult, uh, but uh, so long-term contract spot uh, uh, price uh, purchases and uh, some of the strategic uh, parts and components uh, were partially thinking of uh, manufacturing in-house. So these are the measures we are taking or preparing to take. Thank you. Just to add to that. Uh, the impact of a price hike, when will that show? Uh, uh, have you already seen the impact uh, of that? That's my question. Answer. Uh, we're trying to raise uh, prices where we can. And uh, in terms of orders, uh, next uh, fiscal year, uh, we may take orders. Uh, parts components uh, are procured uh, and uh, uh, they're going to be manufactured in the plan. And that all, all uh, it could have a major impact. And so uh, passing on a uh, price increase, uh, that will have to happen in the sales and marketing activities uh, starting next year. So we may have an order received, uh, but uh, uh, with inflation happening in the meantime, our production yield uh, may deteriorate. So we will have to amend uh, the contracts with our customers if necessary, and renegotiate the prices with our customers uh, if that uh, is necessary. So we're asking customers to share uh, in terms of increased uh, costs. So full-fledged activities uh, as such will uh, start next year. Thank you. My second question. Uh, Q4 uh, results, if I may ask about the details. Q3 profit and uh, Q4 profit, uh, the way in which it's generated, uh, uh, there seems to be a jump or gap uh, in three areas. Uh, number one, uh, IT, uh, Q4 profit, and uh, Hitachi Energy, there seems to be an uh, increase in profit for Q4 and uh, Hitachi High Tech. So it seems that Q4 profits are considerably higher compared to Q3 for these three areas. Um, is there a skew or focus uh, in those three areas? And is that why? I mean, I ask Kato san to answer this. Are we manipulating this in a complex uh, manner? No, uh, these are pretty straightforward, but I would like to ask uh, Kato san to answer. So allow me to explain Kato speaking. Uh, starting from the easiest, IT, in the area of IT, as we explained uh, today, Lumada, uh, front uh, business, and uh, SAP, uh, Global Logic, these are doing very well, as we said, uh, for performance uh, Q1 through Q3, there's a lot of uh, demand, but unfortunately, because of shortage of uh, semiconductors, we have not been able uh, to produce enough uh, storage products. And so uh, we're taking measures to secure more semiconductors, and that effect in the fourth quarter will start to show. That is what we expect to see. So that's perhaps the easiest to explain. And the rest, energy, Uh, bringing a fixed uh, cost and appropriate level, we are taking measures and uh, the impact from that is reflected in the four quarter uh, forecast. So that's another reason. And Hitachi High Tech, semiconductor manufacturing uh, equipment or blood uh, analytical uh, equipment, there's a lot of uh, demand, uh, but uh, discrete semiconductors are in shortage. We're taking measures for that. So in the fourth quarter, we believe that we can do more than what we did in Q3. So there are constraints, uh, restrictions, and we're taking measures uh, to alleviate them uh, for the fourth quarter. Thank you. Thank you. Takeshi Zawa-san, please. Please unmute and ask your question. Thank you. Question. I have two questions. First of all, regarding Global Logic uh, orders received. In your explanation, you said that the US and European uh, major companies uh, are the, the deals that uh, you're achieving. But what about the uh, uh, Global Logic on a standalone basis? Uh, have there missed opportunities or uh, are there cross-sell uh, contracts one, uh, energy, and the railway system. 
you said that there is collaboration. Uh, is that uh, already included in the orders received? And so, uh, this is Yoshikawa speaking. I would like to respond. Regarding Hitachi Bantara, we have this company in the United States. There is a cross sell activities uh, that uh, are underway already. Whether it is included in orders received or not, uh, cannot be responded to uh, at this point in time. But it's not just with Bantara, but with Hitachi Energy, Power Grid. There's energy um, digital solutions. Uh, collaboration uh, is expanding in this area. In Tokyo, on the other hand, you know, there are um, co-creation projects underway. It has already begun. Whether it has led to uh, specific orders received uh, or mixed, that is how you should understand the situation. So rather than standalone basis, uh, activities are already underway. Thank you. Question regarding global logic uh, orders. Uh, is it uh, are the orders receiving uh, it's, uh, similar to revenues at 40% level uh, that you have shown here? Is that how it is growing? Yes, situation is similar. Question regarding the IT segment profitability. Uh, with the global logic uh, integration, uh, there must be one of the uh, uh, expenses that have been incurred. Uh, is it uh, in addition to PPA or um, amortization 10 billion yen, or is there additional expenses? And if so, how much? Please elaborate. I'm talking about page 12. Uh, there is a PPA as well, 12 billion uh, amortization. Uh, there are also other detailed expenses, but uh, basically it's the amortization of the PPA. Kato-san, do you have anything to add? Uh, now, let me give you some detailed uh, uh, answer. PPA, amortization on page 12 uh, for free q uh, Three quarters is shown here, but that's from uh, July. So it's for two quarters, about 3 billion per quarter. So it's about the two, 6 billion that is included. On an annual basis, it'll be 9 billion. Uh, it should be around 12 billion on a uh, uh, normal basis. But uh, other than that, uh, there's been no change from the last time we spoke. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Yasui san, please unmute and uh, start your questions. Thank you. A question. I have three questions uh, I would like to ask. So question number one, page 24, the five uh, sector uh, operating income uh, for FY21. Uh, as uh, the original plan for uh, the next uh, fiscal year, uh, I think uh, you were aiming at 10%. Uh, uh, so inclu even including uh, PPA, you're going to aim at uh, achieving 10% uh, from what I remember. So you seem to have toned down uh, the rhetoric, uh, it seems. And so have you made a downward revision since then? My second question, I estimated PPA myself. Roughly, it's about uh, 70 billion that's posted uh, this fiscal year. If that is reversed, 610 billion, if 10% is uh, um, the target, 650 billion. So there is uh, not going to be much of an increase in uh, profit next uh, fiscal year. Is that understanding correct? If you could uh, confirm or deny that. Uh, question number three, FY22, you're looking to increase revenue given the environment, digital, green, uh, global logic, uh, you have those uh, lined up. Uh, so for next, uh, a fiscal year uh, with uh, the performance uh, of FY21 in mind, uh, what are the areas that we should be paying attention to for fiscal year 2022? Answer, thank you for the questions. Uh, page 24, on that page, uh, take a look at uh, five uh, sectors. Um, uh, AOI 8.3%, excluding PPA, I said. So, 
you were asking, wasn't that 10%? Uh, so that was the question, of course. Uh, it would be ideal if we can have 10%, but uh, when we came up with the original uh, plan, are all the potential large MNAs uh, reflected uh, uh, to come up with this 10%? Uh, that was not the case. So it's not that we made a downward uh, revision. Uh, the assumption for coming up uh, with the medium term, uh, there were some large M and uh, A's. And so we thought that we should exclude a PPA uh, to generate the number. So for the five sectors, excluding PPA, uh, we are showing this number. Uh, that is uh, the line of thinking that we had. And second, uh, did we have a downward revision? Uh, in principle, we're not thinking of having downward revisions at this moment. And so uh, we're keeping these numbers as of now. And Kato-san. Uh, the number in including PPA vis-a-vis -vis next uh, fiscal year's uh, a profit, uh, isn't that going to have an impact? And so perhaps next year, not going to uh, going to see a large increase in uh, income, um, although the plan is not there. It might be difficult to comment, but Kato-san, if you could elaborate. Understood. Uh, let me first of all explain this year's uh, situation. And the size of amortization of a PBA in terms of M and A, FY21, uh, 73 billion in total. In terms of five sectors, uh, 64.5 billion. So, page 24, uh, five sectors, uh, AOI, 546. If we add uh, 64.5, uh, that's about 600 billion. So in terms of the ratio, 9.3%. Inclusive of PPA for the five sectors is going to be around 9.3%. Uh, as was uh, said, uh, there's material price increase as well as semi-conductor uh, shortage, uh, COVID-19, because of these uh, factors, uh, this is the number that we have right now. I hope you'll understand. Thank you. So question, uh, given what Kato-san gave in terms of numbers, so margin improvement of uh, 40 to 50 billion. So an increase in uh, income of 50 billion can be expected. And uh, for the five sectors uh, toward FI25, uh, which areas uh, are expected to grow very much? If you could share that thought. Answer, please take a look at uh, uh, page six, which is about orders. So why, why three? Third quarter, Hitachi Energies, uh, sink increase in uh, orders, uh, railway and high tech, uh, these are growing in terms of order intake. And most of that uh, is uh, going to be orders uh, for the coming fiscal year, next uh, fiscal year. If we can procure materials and uh, semiconductors, we can control that. This will all translate into profitability. So FI22, uh, these areas uh, will see a major recovery according to our plan. Thank you. We still have some other hands up, uh, but uh, we'd like to go to the English channel at this time. So are there any questions from the English channel? Uh, if you wish to ask a question, please uh, use the uh, raise hand button. They seem not. So we will revert back to the Japanese channel. Uh, so we will take now questions uh, from the media, institution investors, as well as analysts. Yako san, please. Please unmute and ask your question. Question. I have uh, two questions. I'm sorry, I was delayed in participating. Perhaps you have already covered this, but the uh, first question is regarding orders. For well, ID, third quarter, uh, 120% is very high. Front business and uh, service platform, what is the breakdown between the two? Uh, is this going to continue? 
uh, for the fourth quarter and for the next fiscal year? What is the outlook? That's the first question. Second question. Perhaps I made a miscalculation. No, uh, according to the previous question, for fourth quarter automotive, uh, third quarter, 3.1% AOI. And uh, for the fourth quarter, it is going to explain, uh, improve to 8%. Uh, semiconductor uh, is a cost increase factor to be considered as well. But uh, uh, how do you think uh, you can achieve uh, the recovery to the AOI percentage of the 8%? Answer. Now, regarding orders in terms of IT, uh, Kato-san, over to you. Regarding IT, there is a front office and a service and pl platform. So we have a different approach in explaining these numbers. The front office, uh, uh, the main business is uh, financial uh, for three quarters. Uh, last year, there was, uh, uh, there was a significant uh, um, order. So we are uh, underperforming uh, compared to previous year. Um, the same for the fiscal year, uh, there is going to be underperforming. Uh, but uh, for Rumada, uh, it is remaining strong. For uh, public, uh, we will be exceeding the level of last year for the uh, fourth quarter and for the fiscal year as a service platform. Uh, three quarters. There is a storage uh, uh, shortage. So we are going to be below previous year. For the fiscal year, for the fourth quarter, we are trying to make a recovery, but uh, the situation is very difficult, but the trend is toward the recovery. For the fourth quarter, question, for storage, why why is increased? That's the, is that the image you have? Or on a why why basis? Um, do you think it is very difficult to achieve a recovery in the fourth quarter? Answer. We don't have uh, the precise numbers. We believe it's achievable, but uh, there are some challenges remaining. Uh, question, but uh, do you think there is a visibility? Uh, answer, in terms of trend, uh, semiconductor uh, shortage uh, is uh, the areas that we are overcoming uh, by implementing measures. To your second question, uh, let me explain uh, the second question regarding us demo. For the fourth quarter, uh, we, February and March uh, are very close. So very difficult to implement the significant measures now. But first of all, we can uh, control the fixed cost. Uh, for example, hiring of uh, new recruits, new graduates, that can be controlled. And uh, for factories, uh, the utilization ratio uh, can be adjusted. By so doing, fixed cost uh, can be reduced. From uh, car manufacturers, uh, there is a request uh, for discount. We can push back uh, because of the uh, uh, cost increase. So we can uh, do hard negotiation for request for uh, cost reduction. Material cost, uh, procurement, uh, is uh, area we can improve by reducing material cost. Now, uh, in terms of uh, passing on uh, the price increase, uh, we want to recover several hundred million yen by so by implementing the measures uh, by controlling cost and uh, working toward this uh, target. That's all. A question I have follow up. Uh, in achieving the goal, it seems that uh, you're finding it very difficult to achieve the target. Uh, is that a correct understanding? Answer. The management environment is extremely difficult uh, and February, March, uh, um, of course, it's not business as usual anymore. Uh, given this uh, very difficult environment, uh, we have to do our utmost in dealing with the challenges. Uh, so um, challenging times will continue. So that is a correct understanding uh, on your part. So it isn't as if uh, we can achieve uh, these numbers uh, uh, on the business as usual basis. That is not the case. Thank you. Masta. Next, Ayada-san. Ayada-san, please unmute and ask your questions. Thank you. 
question. I have two questions. My first question, uh, this is a follow up uh, to uh, earlier uh, questioner's uh, question. Page uh, six, uh, uh, IT, a 12% increase in the third quarter. Uh, in uh, social infrastructure BU, uh, there was a large uh, project. So if you exclude uh, such large uh, projects, uh, uh, was IT sector uh, able to uh, gain a positive uh, increase in the third quarter. Uh, financial uh, sector is doing well. So inclusive of uh, what happened in the third quarter in the uh, financial business, uh, what was the case? That's my first question. Page uh, 26, uh, that's my second question. Uh, so this year's uh, forecast in terms of mobility, AOI for building uh, and uh, railway systems. I think uh, uh, there's a downward revision looking at the comments noted here for the building systems uh, a top line because of increase in china business it seems that uh, uh, it's looking good uh, but uh, in terms of uh, income uh, because of deteriorating uh, credit in the real estate uh, sector it's down so it's hard to see whether it's up or down so what's the status as of uh, the third quarter uh, and uh, the forecast for the full year and what's going to happen next year and onward uh, railway, um, AOI is 4% uh, this time, and uh, this is perhaps due to uh, potential deterioration of profitability in some of the projects. Is this something temporary, uh, but uh, orders are up, and so in terms of profitability, is it going to hold uh, into the next fiscal year? So uh, the first half of the question regarding IT, I would like to turn it over to Kato-san. Kato speaking, thank you for the question. So definition of large projects is very hard uh, to state. So I cannot directly answer you in terms of uh, what happened, excluding large uh, projects, uh, be it finance uh, or other projects. Uh, DX demand is very strong. So Lumada related uh, uh, demand is uh, very strong. Uh, we're getting a lot of inquiries, uh, uh, orders, as well as uh, revenues. So the field that we have is very strong and good. So I think uh, 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 we can be upbeat um, for the coming fiscal year. Uh, an answer for the second half of the question, elevators uh, business. Starting from uh, the start of the year, there have uh, been negative factors and the largest impact has come from material price uh, increase. Uh, it's been up by 10 billion compared to our uh, original plan. And uh, we have tried to recover uh, through FX impact and others. But as I said, elevator renewal business here in Japan is uh, worsening. And so uh, it's down by uh, tens of billions of yen here in Japan. Uh, because of that, compared to the budget, uh, downward revision is uh, needed. As I said, material price increase uh, on the order of 10 billion. If we can control that uh, next uh, fiscal year, the impact from this uh, will become uh, smaller. And elevator renewal uh, business in Japan with the uh, pandemic uh, placed under uh, control. And once investment activities uh, resume, this uh, uh, will be better. So as far as uh, elevator business uh, downward revision is concerned this time, it's because of one of uh, factors mainly. And so we're looking to recover this business in next fiscal year. And regarding the railway business, there are a number of factors that came into play for one thing. Project cost uh, rose. Uh, there were quality issues that happened, so we had to rectify that, uh, increasing cost. And in specific uh, uh, projects uh, on a one off uh, basis, uh, cost increases uh, occurred uh, uh, on a one off uh, basis. So these are temporary factors. And uh, next uh, fiscal year, we will no longer see them. Uh, on a more strategic note, uh, the profitability from train cars and railway uh, signals and service uh, business compared to such other uh, businesses, uh, profitability there is not uh, very high. So we have to adjust that. So uh, we will have to shift uh, investment resources uh, uh, away from train cars uh, to other railway related uh, business. And uh, we're about to begin making such shift or adjustment. So one of uh, factors, uh, medium to long-term factors are both at play. We're looking at both. 
Well, thank you. So question, just to clarify, on the elevator business side, so China, uh, real estate, uh, credit uh, deterioration, because of that, uh, you are making downward uh, revision, it says, but we need not be too concerned about that. Looking at this, uh, you would be very worried for the next fiscal year. Well, answer, Yoshikawa speaking. Inclusive of our outlook for the China business, if I may add a few comments, as Kamara san said, more so than what he said, from my perspective, what I can say is that uh, we're looking at uh, uh, the trends of uh, the peers uh, in the industry, information from capital markets. Uh, in the West, we have competitors. For example, uh, US company O recently came up with uh, a statement, uh, their for fourth quarter, our third quarter, their orders in the fourth quarter in terms of uh, the number of units uh, has improved by 10%, they're saying. So uh, our European competitors, their orders uh, and revenue uh, guidance will be affected uh, by this US company's uh, statement. On the other hand, uh, orders uh, in the third quarter and orders uh, for the full year, uh, given the 10% that one of our peers has uh, stated, not that we are inferior uh, to their level. So if you break down uh, the profit and loss uh, level, there could be varying factors coming into play. But in terms of the outlook, uh, robustness of the market in China remains on a fundamental basis in terms of the number of units. Uh, those uh, who have number one, number two uh, in the China market leveraging that position fundamentally, uh, we uh, would uh, continue to be strong, not being beaten uh, by our peers. Uh, so it's uh, not uh, all a doom. <laughs> so uh, let me just uh, add that comment. Thank you. So, uh, we still have uh, many hands up, but uh, in the interest of time, uh, the next question will be the last. Yamasaki-san, please. Please unmute and ask your question. Question. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear. So I have a question um, other than performance. Uh, you have uh, talked about the organization change. I have uh, two questions uh, regarding this change in organization. Regarding Hitachi Digital, uh, there is going to be a uh, North American base. We'll have a name change uh, to enhance the functions. What kind of functions uh, do you intend to increase or enhance? Second question is regarding the uh, very simplified uh, structure with three pillars. What used to belong in uh, mobility and uh, it seems that uh, really uh, is going to become separate. But how did you reorganize uh, the business into the three uh, areas? Yoshika-san, can you address that answer? Um, we had the digital holdings uh, existed in Silicon Valley and uh, it was a vehicle for the purpose of investments. But uh, on this occasion, we want to develop this further uh, evolve into a different structure. So uh, it will have a substance. Uh, there'll be about 100 employees uh, in uh, Hitachi Digital. Lumada uh, business deployment uh, uh, headquarters will be established here. Uh, Lumada was uh, um, based in uh, Tokyo, Japan, but uh, we will have uh, a base in uh, Silicon Valley uh, so that uh, we can uh, globally develop uh, Lumada. So uh, it is different to the digital holdings company we had in the past. It's uh, completely different. So it has a strategic uh, intention in establishing this company from Tokyo. A person in charge will be uh, seconded uh, to this location. Now to your second question, uh, railways uh, is now separate uh, from the uh, building system or elevators. Now for the railway system uh, is very close to the environmental business. And that is our understanding of this business. In the past, um, it is different from the diesel uh, railways. So it's a hybrid, 
and uh, electrification uh, is uh, promoted in railways. So uh, it has a very uh, high affinity with the, the environmental business. So we've positioned this uh, railway system uh, in the environmental area. But elevator uh, is more industrial equipment. That is the reason why we separated the two. That's all. Thank you. Hi, arigatou gozaimashita. Thank you. Uh, time is up. Uh, so with that, uh, we would like uh, uh, to uh, conclude the earnings uh, briefing uh, for uh, the third quarter results uh, for the year ending March 2022. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedules to attend this. Thank you. <laughs>